How long does it usually take to be a blue belt? You're not ready for a blue belt yet. You need to study yourself, you need to study your roles, and then stop getting guillotined so much. The people who wear ear guards, is that weak? 100%, yeah. I would rather be just a bigger, stronger human. Do you do any cardio training? Then you can hit each other with an open palm. So something like that. That makes sense. What do you do to make yourself heavy on the mat? And that's just genetics, man. <laughs> okay, so why do you take BCAAs? Well, because... <laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome to Be Frank Podcast episode 17. Today we have a special guest, Jake Coleman. He's a BJJ competitor. And then I can't, I wish I can say my training partner, but he's so much better than me. But uh, thank you for coming and then welcome to the show. Thanks man, thanks for having me. Uh, so Jake, so can you tell us uh, who you are and uh, that those who feel, uh, doesn't listener doesn't know about your, you? Well, you know, um, work on airplanes for a living, you know, and then in my free time, I like to go train jujitsu at the forge, you know, Yeah. and, uh, help teach leg lock class on Mondays with Austin. <laughs> so, you know, that's what I love to do. That so and, how, how did you, uh, sorry, how did you get into the BJJ? Oh man. Back in when I lived in Enid a couple of years ago, about four years ago now, uh, one of the guys at work, he's like, Hey man, you got to try this jujitsu thing. Cause Dylan Smith just opened his gym in in Enid, Shaw Matt, and they've been open for about two months and he's telling me, Hey, you got to go try it out. And I said, what is this like karate or something? <laughs> had no interest. I had no idea. That was five years ago. It was about, it was about four years ago. Four now, years ago. Cause I've been training four years and, uh, I went, I finally twisted my arm and I went out and, uh, I got beat up by everybody in there and they're all just a bunch of white belts that have been training for about three months and uh then i was hooked like, <laughs> hooked ever since that was in it yeah the, did you uh had a like a wrestler background no or? just like i lifted weights in high school and i played football we didn't have a wrestling program got you at my high school so i played football and lifted weights and that's about it so then you went to in it and then you went to a different gym to hop around or yeah. what was the process in finding a forge well so my now wife, Chelsea, she was working in Norman. And so we moved down here to Edmond so she could make the drive. And then I continued to work in Enid. So I have an hour and a half drive one way to yeah. work at Vance Air Force Base. And um, I was training in the mornings with Luke Woodard at American Elite for about a year. Gotcha. And then uh, we ended up having like a little bit of a split and then we went over to the forge and then uh that's where we've been ever since yeah so like um i mean four years to become like purple belt stuff is pretty like a uh, fast pace right yeah it's just a little bit yeah i got my purple belt in about three years so i've been a purple belt almost a year like to the day like so. those who doesn't know understand like a bjj right like uh so karate and stuff like a get belt is super easy. Yeah. But like, can you explain like what it takes and then what kind of belts a system in the BJJ? Well, yeah, because going from white to blue, I feel like is a is a really big step. But then getting from blue to purple, I think is almost more important because I feel like if you're not if you're not any good and you get your purple belt, you're just gonna get smashed by everybody. <laughs> I feel like you should be a purple belt like longest. Yeah. That should be your longest belt. Yeah. You know? And then a couple years at brown, a couple years at black. But you should be you should be able to submit black belts at purple, but then you just need to refine your game all the way to black belt, in my opinion. Got you. Yeah. So what's the difference between uh white belt to blue belt? Oh man. So a white belt to a blue belt. So uh, I would say if you're in a room full of white belts and if you get somebody on top of you and you cannot get out, you can't escape, you're not ready for a blue belt yet. You know what I'm saying? I feel like against any white belt, you if you're a blue belt, you should be able to escape any pin. That should be, that's just, I think that's like my criteria because the game is just so big. I don't think you should be the best at takedowns or the best at so certain submissions or whatever i think you just be able to move you know correctly got you mat. so like if you're like like full mount getting full mount or half mount or whatever yeah. and if you're going against any white belt 
then you should be able to escape that position. Then go back to some sort of offensive guard or get on top, something like that, you know. Got you. Mm-hmm. How long does it usually take to be a blue belt? Man, I'd say after about a year, maybe two years max, then you should be, if you're training consistently. How long know. did it take you to become blue belt? Uh, I was a blue belt. I became a blue belt about a year. About a year? Yeah, about a year. But I've been training every day. So I, from the day I started, I was training every day, every weekend, every, every day. day. So like, can you kind of work me through your training schedule, like let's say a week? Okay, so right now I'm very fortunate because I work from eight to four. So a lot of times I'll go train in the mornings. Um, at you go the, 5 a.m. class? The 5 a.m. class, then I'll just sh- shower and change real quick, head on to work, work all day, and then, um, ba- you know, get home and go train at night, you know, uh, from like 6, 6.30 till nine o'clock and then lift weights after that. So, uh, so three training session a day. That's yeah. Do you do that every day? I try to every day. Uh, like I'll sometimes I'll have to skip a weightlifting session or something, or, you know, when I'm like really hurting <laughs> Normally <laughs> towards the end of the week, right. I'm like all busted up. I mean, like you got like massive leg. I know like people can't see it, but like, it's like, what do you like? Uh, how much you squat? Man, that's just genetics. Man. <laughs> I, can't, I can't squat with to save my life. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you train legs though? I mean, a little bit, like yeah. probably once a week. But not, not, I never go super heavy on the on squat or anything like that because then I just hurt myself and then. Yeah. Uh, Is it like a? Do you do like a bodybuilder weight training? Or I would say a hundred percent. Yeah. Really? Like, yep. Just a body like a. I don't do a whole lot of like explosive movements and stuff. Now where my wife, on the other hand, she does, she does like power cleans and explosive movements and dynamic movements and stuff like that. But uh, I, I've always said like, she just trains to be like a Ferrari and I kind of train to be like a dump truck. So you know, <laughs> that's a dump truck. fits my game a little yeah, bit. I mean, like, you know, like I roll with you and all that kind of stuff, but I don't know, like sometime I roll with the guys uh, like a different gym that I go to New Limits Academy and I roll with the, the guy who is like 240 pounds and then they put knee on my belly and then like I can like kind of survive like today for example you're like don't tap while like you know um like I'm pinched I'm like it feels like 300 pounds on me I mean like how much you weigh I'm only 195 pounds like what yeah. why is that like is that like a technique? I guess it's a hundred percent, a hundred percent. That's technique. Um, cause yeah, I could take somebody who's way bigger and stronger than me and they, if they don't have that technique, it's, they're not going to feel as heavy on the mat. Just like mm. someone who could be, who could bench 400 pounds, you know, I could overpower them on the mat. It's just leverage versus so strength. What, how can you, can you explain to me, like, what do you do to, make yourself heavy on the mat well it's it's literally just practice um and it took me a little while to figure this out but i would say once i got i was going from about blue belt to purple belt i really figured out how to put my mate or put my weight down on the mat so Mm. how to really properly put the pressure down I would say from about blue to purple, start figuring that out. Got you. Yes. So, I mean, like a jujitsu is kind of like, I love, I wish, uh, you know, uh, I started going to forge like a long time ago, but oh, like, me it's, too. Uh, it's, me ne- too. <laughs> it's never too late, I guess. Like, it's like from like a younger crowd to like older people, like it forges, like, I bet the best place to train jujitsu. A hundred, in my opinion, a hundred percent, because I used to struggle with getting um, like good competitive rounds mm-hmm. um, back in uh, like my, when I was at American Elite and stuff. And then I would only get my good competitive rounds during open mats where I go to like, I can go to the Forge or something like that or, or some of these other schools where a lot of the better, you know, people would show up to. And then finally I just listened because uh, Austin Morris was just, you know, telling me, hey man, you need to come to the Forge. And then <laughs> finally we did and it's yeah. just, yeah, it was a good decision, 100%. And then on the other hand, right, like 
Do you do you think that like for me like you know I have been I have only going to like a jujitsu class and jujitsu gym for like six months or so, and then like when I'm roll with you and then we get smashed, right? Mm -hmm. And then like so then like I feel like man I'm not like nothing like I, I'm not training like I I'm not beneficial to training training part being a training partner. Like I don't know, but like also like I train with like a, my level people, or whatever, and then your people. Like how, why should I my mentality or the people who started to rolling to the like experienced guys? Why should they think the mentality wise? And from you guys, your end, more experienced guys. Like, what's your mentality going rolling with like a my All skill right. level? So I got, so in my opinion. You need, whenever you're just starting out as a white belt, you got to like um, try to roll with people your skill level to work your offense, okay? But a lot of times you're just going to get smashed a lot again by, you know, better people, higher belts. So then once you start to transition from white belt into blue belt and purple belt, you're going to start getting a lot better, right? So you can still use your use the blue belts and the other purple belts and stuff to work your offense and stuff, but then as you go... Uh, higher in skill level, you're going to have to start working your defense because those people are going to be a lot better than you. So whenever I roll with somebody who's not as good as me, I work my offensive positions. I work submissions. I work pins. I work top position, bottom position, stuff like that. Now, I think it's really important to every once in a while, you have to go find somebody who's better than you. That way I can work out of... Di um, disadvantageous positions right so even if i'm trying my very best i'd have to go against somebody who's a you know a brown or a black belt who's better than me and i'll do my best but i won't be in the best positions right so i'll have to fight out of submissions i'll have to fight from bottom position you know bottom pin side control mount all those things yeah and you have to leave your ego at the door sometimes because just because you're getting beat by somebody, that doesn't mean you're not getting better. It means you really just need to be worrying about doing your best. So even if I if I roll with somebody now and I do my very best and I still get submitted, well, I can't look at it as I got submitted. I got to look at it like, okay, well, I retained my guard for this long. I got a sweep or I got this, I got that. I, got, I have to break the match down and look at the good things that I did and then work on the bad things that led to the submission so if we ever started in like myself or like I, any other white belts around do you think that they should for they, do you think that they should like a separate like for example after the class right we have like maybe three or four rounds do you think we should just uh switch people to like have like okay same kind of skill level like every practice after practice do you think that or like should we go to if you're like a month straight, let's just go through that white level, then do the offense and then defense like a next month or like, what would you recommend? I would I'd recommend like a little bit of each practice yeah. and then have a goal. So like um, right now for me, uh, getting ready for this combat jiu-jitsu match, my goals are to stay in top position and pin the person, making them more exact, like work way harder than I am. So after about, so say if we have a five minute round, yeah. about the last 45 seconds, that's when I go for the submission. Gotcha. But the entire time we've been rolling, they're getting cooked to the point where they're exhausted yeah. and I'm not, <laughs> right? So that's, yes. that's my, that's been my goal for the, since, uh, for about, for a couple of weeks. Gotcha. Okay. So you just have to have a little bit of a goal. Yeah. So what is uh, combat jujitsu and like people, those people and don't understand? I think I, it's basically like. MMA light, you know, it's yeah. so all, all we have to do, it's a regular no gi grappling match. Yeah. All submissions. Um, but once one person is grounded, so say a knee or a hip hits the mat, then you can hit each other with an open palm. So something like that, you know, mm. boss rooting style. So they can hit with, uh, this yeah, it's just this right here. Gotcha. That's, that's an open palm. And, uh, I think it keeps, uh, the jujitsu honest and it keeps it, you know, um, oh, what's the word? 
uh, more like a street. realistic yeah. absolutely yeah. because I fell in love with it my first time around practicing this. I would go to these different to different gyms and different open mats and stuff, and I'd be like, "Okay, would you like to do a combat jiu-jitsu match?" And then a lot of guys, a lot especially the jiu-jitsu people, I just you know give them a little tap, like just little smacks in from wherever, and they just didn't realize that you can get hit from that position. So if you pull deep half, yeah, you know, in a street fight or in any fight where you right. can hit each other, that's a terrible place to be, <laughs> you know? So a, an otherwise good, you know, a good jujitsu guard without like controlling the distance, the angle mm -hmm. and the posture of your opponent, you could get beat up really bad. So I just, I just loved it. Yeah. So you have a combat, um, uh, match coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Is a uh, MCL, right? Yep. Like when is it like, a, do you have a opponent? Yeah, so it's supposed to be, it's it's on February 18th. Uh, my opponent is uh, TJ T-Bone. Uh, he's, a, he's a purple belt out of Conquest Jiu-Jitsu. So he's really tough. He's had some MMA fights and he's a really, he's very strong, very strong person. So I it's going to be, a, oh no, this guy, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's tough, he's strong. He's going to be a good opponent. I yeah. can't wait. Where is that at? It's going to be an Enid at the Stride Bank Center. So it's Oh, got you. Then uh, everybody from your hometown come watch and all oh, that yeah. kind of stuff. That's awesome. That uh what uh what made you decide to go into uh do that competition? Man, well, cuz Dylan just he just asked me. Dylan Smith, he's my first coach, you know. So I trained with him for about 3 4 months before we ended up moving down to Oklahoma City and he's a super awesome coach and uh he just uh kept me in mind, sent me a message, asked me if I wanted to be on his, you know, be on the car. And I, of course I said, yes. You know? <laughs> what is, do you have to cut weight or? Well, it's at 190 pounds, but it's a uh, it's day before weigh-in. So I'd have to drop probably five or seven pounds. Okay. That's know? not too bad. No. Yeah. So like, uh, I was thinking that, uh, you know, that you have a combat jujitsu match and then you have, a another tournament coming up. Yeah, just like in a couple of days this weekend, we're gonna, I'm doing the gi and I'm doing no gi. I'll do the absolutes as well. So that way, you know, get as many matches as possible. So whenever you do uh, the tournament, do you have like a routine to get into like a week before? Cause I had a like, kind of like, a, I did a AGF tournament on the first time on that gi and the no gi. And then I was like, man, like I'll just train hard till like a week before and then like just kind of come down a little bit. And then like I, cause I'm new and then like I was going through with Zevin and say, Hey, okay, here's how I escape from like, you know, uh, triangle, mm -hmm. arm bar and all that kind of stuff. Just like going through the motion of how to get out and then like, and hit a little bit cardio cut weight and then go in. But like, I was curious, like uh, more experienced people like you, like, do you have like a, like a routine before? Well, the I would tournament? say I don't really have a routine. I just try to rest my body as much as I can a day or two before the, the tournament, because in reality I'm in competition shape all the time. I train every day, you know, so I'm always ready to compete, to be honest with you. So, um, I guess the biggest thing would be getting my mind right for the, uh, the rule set. So making sure, cause IBJJF rules are different than AGF rules. And obviously the combat jiu-jitsu match is completely different rules. So it's whatever, to, it just depends on what rule set I, I've got to, to go, go into. That's so. awesome. You can say like you're fight ready all the time. Oh, absolutely. So like, uh, do you do any cardio training? I, I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Cause, um, the, I get most of my cardio training from rolling to actually all of it. Yeah. Um, but I have, I would say I have the luxury right now. Um, as you get better and better, you can pretty much roll. You can roll light and then I could roll hard. Okay. So I could roll very efficiently and I could, you know, do things that wouldn't, I could do moves and whatever, and I could roll and not get my heart rate up. Right. But I make it a point to make sure that I roll inefficiently. Right. I just want to just redline my heart rate. That way I get, in better and better shape. Do you wear a heart rate monitor while training? I don't. I don't. I'm pretty. I'm pretty <laughs> just by the by feel. You know. I just, it's yeah. it's crazy because like uh, you know like um, 
I do cardio training so much doing stairs, but like you roll and then like you like not seem tired. And then I see like you roll with the other guys and like Austin and all that stuff. And then like you're not like defeated or like uh, exhausted, right? And right. Then is that, do you, do you not believe in like uh, running or doing stairs? Well, well, all of those things are great to make your cardio better, but in reality, it's efficiency that's going to make you ha uh, look like you have more cardio on the mat. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because you could get somebody who's in the best shape of their life, but they, they don't know how to roll. They're going to get exhausted extremely quickly because they're not moving efficiently. Gotcha. Does that make sense? So, um, when I'm, when I roll, I'm, I can, you know, when I'm rolling in competition, I need to kind of preserve my gas tank, right? I can't just blow my whole gas tank out in the very beginning of the match. I have to pace myself. Got you. All right. Yeah. yeah. And then I was thinking about that even like today, for example, like, you know, like you, we line up the, on the wall, right? And then like a good person, good people will go into the middle and then wait for us to come out. And then like for you, for example, that you win, so you stay, right? So mm -hmm. you're rolling eight minutes and then another eight minutes so pretty much you're rolling 16 minutes straight but people suck like me like i roll with you and i get like like a trip or whatever and then uh sweep for like in like 15 seconds and then in that eight minutes of time i'm only practicing like maybe two minutes mm -hmm. and i was thinking about like this is kind of like rich gets richer and the poor gets poor you know what i mean yeah so like what is like a what is a good um, like a technique for the the new guys? Should we just like try to be there as long as possible? Um, yeah, with the wall drills, it's kind of a yeah. I could see I see where you're coming from from there. Um, sometimes like when the bigger classes will have like a, you win three, you have to get you get out, you know, to really kind of stir that up. Yeah. Um, and we've also done that in the comp training as well. Cause like we've split the room, right? right? So we have like the upper belts and the heavy guys over on one side and then the lower belts and stuff that way you guys wouldn't have to go with us because it's kind of a double edged sword because in, if I, if we're all in the same group, right, we would have six guys on the mat and those guys that are in like, say it's King of the Hill or something, King of the mat. Well, those are all the best guys. Right. And so, I wouldn't have to roll with all, with the best guys. I wouldn't have to roll with Austin or Livingston or Tyler because they're on the mat with me. So I would just be getting a bunch of white and blue belts and we would, and the training wouldn't be near as hard, right? Well, when we split the room like that, then all the best guys have to roll with all the best guys, which makes for a grueling practice. Makes and, sense. But that makes, that makes you better for sure. That makes sense. Yeah. And then like, it's jujitsu is like kind of like, um, different sports right like do you do uh kickboxing stuff before or? yeah i have i was training with livingston for a little bit and then uh i was doing some uh kickboxing with uh at american elite and stuff too so yeah but you you like the jiu-jitsu yeah I, th I would say my the jiu-jitsu is just my passion i'd say i just love doing that yeah. so so like my thing is like uh so i do a lot of muay thai mm -hmm. and practice and stuff and then like i would say i'm a stand-up kind of person but the jujitsu is the kind of like I'm like more and more get interested. I'm like loving it. I I look forward to jujitsu training more than Muay Thai training these days. Mm -hmm. And then it's crazy like so many moves and then so many offense to back. And then like it's kind of like uh, you tell me or like somebody tells tell me say hey you should do that and they just like right there. And then like, why didn't I think of that? You know, mm -hmm. that kind of moment. But like, there is a, so many moves, right? Like oh, there's yeah. like unlimited, like as a purple belt. But I was curious, do you like write down notes and stuff to like memorize or like they black belts and purple belts and other people, I bet like they're smart. You know what I mean? Just like, well, man, uh, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a little different when it comes to this, but I, love watching instructionals all right mm. so i train every day i try to train twice a day that's my goal and then lift weights on top of that so physically um i'm big and strong i'm strong right so but that only goes so far obviously because you know a big strong guy can only you know muscle his way through so much but what makes somebody go from good to great 
is technique. So I love watching instructionals and I have so many instructionals. I've watched so many hours of instructionals. Um, like I said, I used to have to drive uh, for a couple of years. I drove an hour and a half one way. So I'd have three hours of driving. Well, I had a tablet set up and I would watch Gordon Ryan and Craig Jones instructionals while I'm just cruising down the road and just really? listen to them <laughs> while I'm just cruising. And uh, that really, really helped me. So uh, I would learn some great move and then I'd show all my, you know, all the guys and then we'd all just get better collectively, you know, so. So you just uh, watch those videos and you try it out in the gym? hundred percent. And it's, it's um, the return, it just keeps getting better and better because the better I get on the mat, the I can just watch something one time and I can immediately apply it. Whereas when I was a white belt, I'd have to watch it a bunch of times and then I wouldn't be able to, you know, apply it because I don't really know how to move correctly and, you know, all these things. But the better I get, it's just, I could watch a move or I could do, I could see those moves and I could immediately apply it because I'm, I can move better on the mat the more I, you know, get better. So, so. you didn't like write it down or anything like that? No, I just, I, I, st I tried to write it down uh, I would, I had, a, I have a red notebook full of notes and I would basically just watch a couple minutes worth of video and then I'd write it down. I'd write down what I saw and then, but that was kind of pointless. It would actually be, it's actually better for me to just watch it twice or watch it three times. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just writing down what I saw. So who's a uh, Gordon Ryan you say? Oh yeah. Gordon, like I love Gordon Ryan's instructionals. He's really thorough. The way he breaks things down. Uh, uh, Craig Jones instructionals worked really good. The front headlock instructional, like the front headlock escapes because uh, we're, you know, we love guillotines. Yeah. <laughs> so learning how to escape guillotines was just a, so good. And yeah. yeah. I need to start watching those. I do. I do watch like a Devin sent me like a jujitsu, like a DVD or whatever. Yeah. It's like an hour worth of like oh, every. Man. Uh, yeah. Cause like these instructionals are like, 17 or 18 hours long <laughs> and i've got a lot of them and i've watched a lot of them so uh, it like with the like the leg lock instructionals uh that made me that helped so much because i thought i thought i was pretty good you know at leg locks until i met some really good leg lockers and i was like i am not good i need to you know study this yeah so everyone wants to everyone's okay with doing like the workouts everyone's okay with going to jujitsu practice right but no one wants to sit down for two, one, two or three hours and just sit in front of a TV and watch someone explain a move, you know, on a jujitsu move. It's like going to class. Yeah. So, but I can, you know, some people can just, we'll sit there and watch it and not absorb any of it, but I can watch it and just absorb it like a sponge, you know? I mean, that, that makes sense. And then like you watch it, you apply it and you teaching people to how to do it. Yes. I mean, you it's a repetition kind Absolutely. of thing. And I always make sure I teach, I show somebody I like, especially Austin. Uh, I love showing Austin the moves that I learn because I've, I've thought about it. Like what if I, if I learn these things and then I don't show any of my friends, any of anybody else and sure I'll be, you know, I'll get hit that move you know, until they figure it out, you know, I'll hit that move on people. I'll get that submission. I'll get that sweep or whatever until they figure it out. But that doesn't make me any, that doesn't really make us better. Like I want us all to be, to get better. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think that I forged in there. I think it's like, uh, everybody's on the upper belt. People are super nice. And then like, I try to do it like, you know, like every time I get smashed, and then I get, I asked, like, say, hey, what did I do wrong? Yeah, yeah cause, and that's the thing. I, I get that question all the time. Hey, what did I do wrong? It's like, hey, don't, don't think about what you did wrong. Just try to think about what you did right a little bit, you know, yeah. or focus on what the other, um, if you got beat, focus on what the other guy did, right. you know? So probably better question is what did you do to, what, what, what would be the better question to ask? Well, yeah, because I still don't have a very good answer to that because I keep getting asked, you know, hey, what do, I, what do I do? What do I do wrong? Well, and so instead of just asking, instead of like answering that question, what you did wrong, I just try to give them a move that I did, you know, like, hey, I did this. This has been working great for me, so you should try that move. You know right. what I'm saying? So uh, recently I've been working on my top on pins, you yeah. know, pinning somebody in the top position. So that doesn't just mean um, 
going to the mount or side control, right? I want to try to pin somebody using my hips and my legs. That way I have a free hand or both hands, Yeah, you know? Uh, so even though I still may be in a guard, um, there's, I'm pinning them to the point where they don't really have much offense, if that makes sense. Gotcha. So I've just tried, that's just a different way of like thinking about instead of just trying to pass the legs, trying to pass the guard. It's like, well, I'll pass the guard, but I'm going to smash you the entire time. You're going to be exhausted by the time I do pass. And then the submission comes easy. Or if we're, you know, doing a combat jiu-jitsu match or an MMA mat fight, you know, I have a free hand to strike with. So yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. Me and you did that combat yeah. match. I was like, you're like, you have to be on top. I'm like, yes, I was trying to, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think that, uh, it's great to know, but do you think that, uh, doing jujitsu helps different aspect of your life? Like doing like work or like a relationship, like, do you, do you, do you, do you have, do you agree with that? Statement? I a hundred percent agree like it. Cause after like a super crappy practice and you've been all beat, you're all beat up and tired or whatever that nobody can hurt my feelings after that. So if I get yelled at at work or some, one of my coworkers is, you know, being a dick or something, it doesn't matter to me. It just <laughs> that rolls right off, rolls right <laughs> off me, you know? Yeah. What makes you like, what make you wake up in the, like, what time you wake up? Well, normally, like if I'm trying to go to, if I go to class in the morning, I got to be up at, uh, like four 45, five o'clock, you, you know, that every Monday through Friday. I try to, I try to more, mostly, um, Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays. That way I can make Luke's class in the mornings. Got you. Yeah. And then absolutely I will make, you know, evening practice. So like four 45 hits, right? Yeah. What goes through in your head? I'm like, oh man, I don't want to get up. I don't want to get up. And then I'll get up. And I, it's like every time, every time I don't want to go, every time I feel like beat up or tired. And then I get there, stretch, get warmed up. And then after that practice, my day is always better. It, it's always better after that. Why uh, do you think that is? Because you went through the like hard stuff or like it's already days already started man, i don't know i don't know what it is like even today like i was running errands uh running errands getting stuff done and i was just right down the street from the from the gym at like 10 minutes till class started i didn't even have a gi a clean gi in my truck i had to go borrow one i showed up and even though i'm all beat up and tired i still showed up and then afterwards i just felt way better so it's always the times that i don't want to go and i make myself go i feel the best afterwards so mm. That is awesome. I mean, like, it's kind of like enjoy the struggle. If you can enjoy the struggle, I think that, you know, anything, like if it's hard, if it's easy, everybody will do it kind of mentality. And then I like taking a cold shower in the morning. Oh God. I mean, that's kind of why <laughs> Without I me, do man. No cold water for me. <laughs> I'm, I mean, you should try it. I could try it, but I don't yeah. know. Man. It's like, a. it's, I notice whenever you take cold shower and then like, Whenever I do take a cold shower, 10 seconds, I just miserable. But if I take like two minutes, like you're tell, telling me, like whenever you're on top of me, or like breathe, right? It's the same thing happens. Like I just breathe and I just, it's getting cold. And then like my breathe like regulates it. And then after I get off the shower, cold shower, like my body start getting warm from inside uh -huh. and then you feel like a king like, just oh, like I, just, <laughs> I just feel better i know there's like science behind it like i've listened to like some huberman podcasts and stuff like that i just haven't done it yet yeah <laughs> you know? i mean you try yeah. sometime i don't know like i i think that I, it's good for your i don't know like a metabolism or skin or whatever and they also like uh cardio or whatever i don't know but it makes me feel better mm -hmm. and then forge the shower i thought for the longest time that there's like no hot shower <laughs> so every time after the practice i was taking cold shower oh, nice and then i was telling like austin like this i mean you guys probably should like you know fix it and then austin was like well everybody think that but like it's the other way around <laughs> if you, you can just turn the handle the other way you <laughs> yeah. get some more water oh yeah, i guess i didn't try that one but uh do, do you think that uh people who doesn't understand or people who don't know jujitsu and if you're recommending to a jujitsu to somebody what would you say is anybody asked like like uh 
Do you recommend to people to go to jujitsu? I do. I've got I've gotten a couple of guys to come to from work, go to go to class with me and stuff. I I have been unsuccessful at like finding somebody and getting them hooked like I've been hooked yet. Right. But yeah, I do I I recommend it all the time because a lot of people think that it's uh oh, what's the word? A a a fight every time. But it's yeah. it's not. It's it's just like Joe Rogan said, it's a uh, it's a puzzle. It's just a big puzzle for problem solving with dire consequences, dire physical consequences. That's all it is. And but we don't have to roll super hard. No one's getting hurt every time. It's not a big crazy, you know, fight every time. It's it's not like that. So yeah, people just immediately get the wrong impression because yeah. a lot of times I show up, I got a black eye, I got cuts on my face, my ears are all jacked up, and <laughs> you know I'm all beat up and tired and yeah. hurt all the time. But I'm like, no, you don't have to roll like I do. You can roll, <laughs> you can roll easy and learn. You know. Right. So what do you think about cauliflower ears? Right. Like, do you? So you, you I, got some. Yeah, right? dude, I have just embraced it. I just embraced it with open <laughs> arms. I'm like, this is how it is now. Yeah. Like a, so from your perspective, the people who wear ear guards, is that weak? Uh, no, it's not weak. It's the responsible thing, but I've never really been known for doing the responsible thing. I just, <laughs> just, I just keep training through literally every injury and then just, you know, yeah. I'm like, I've popped my knees. I think I had a herniated disc in my back. Oh, there's just a whole bunch of things. And I just continue to train, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just keep going. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, I think. From pers my perspective, I think that have people who have like um, cauliflower ears is cool and like strong looking. Like if I meet somebody at the bar or whatever, doing like fight or like like if I have to get into the situation, I see that ear, I'll run. Oh man! <laughs> you know, well, yeah, I get. I've never really had any issues. People just ask me, "Where'd you wrestle at?" Blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah. I never wrestled. I just do jujitsu. Yeah, you know, because they see my ears. Yeah. But and then like yeah my my girlfriend always like tell me like uh it's it's not good look to uh, have that stuff i i i'm i mean to me an ear is not really a good looking part of a person <laughs> anyway i'm just like you know i really don't care you yeah know? yeah it's just a little miserable because when they get all beat up and blown because right now mine have like uh hardened you know they're like real hard and yeah. callous and, or like you know calcified or whatever but when it, when they're all inflamed and all that stuff, you can't sleep on that side anymore. Yeah, so I, I have to sleep like a corpse, you know, <laughs> like on my, like a vampire, you know, just straight on my back. Yeah, I think that it's. I find it funny because the guys think that cauliflower ear is cool. The girls think don't doesn't, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Well, I can't the knock. Chelsea say? Oh man, she's she's just uh, she's just over it. She's like she doesn't even care anymore, <laughs> you know. Because like I showed her whenever it first came around, I'm like, oh look at my ear. I can't even like hear out of it. Blah blah blah. I can't put AirPods in or earphones in anymore. I have to use the big muffs, you know. Yeah. And she's like, ah, oh, gross. <laughs> she's just gross. Yeah, but you guys, you guys are good together. Mm -hmm. And then I guess good, good thing. She does jujitsu too, right? Yeah, she yeah. does jujitsu and she's really good at it, yeah. you know, cause she won, she's a Pan American champion and a world champion now at blue belt. Now she's going for another Pan American, you know, gold medal in Florida in the Gi. So oh. she's, and she's also on this uh, MCL card mm -hmm. and she's doing a, a Gi match against, oh, nice. uh, against a pretty good, another good blue belt opponent. So it's a, uh, yeah, she's about ready for that purple belt, I'd say, you know. She's oh, getting yeah. close. She's getting close. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, like, shout out to Chelsea. Congratulations. Yeah. And then, like, uh, so I would like to ask, because I was having a conversation with Johnny yesterday, and then he's uh, he wanted to get, he's trying to get, like, a bigger and stronger, oh, right? yeah. Because my thing is, like, I'm fighting in the cage, and the date is uh, set now. It's May 13th. Sweet. But uh, I'm going down. Mm -hmm. Still wait, I'm gonna fight on 145. But it seems like a jiu-jitsu competitors is trying to lift weight, get bigger, right? Because it's kind of some sort of like opposite direction of cage fighting to BJJ. What why do you think that is? Oh, is that true? Well, I'd say like everyone kind of has their like natural weight that they sit at. Yeah. And you know, going you, up in weight. You, you, do you usually used to be big too? Well, I normally I used to just kind of sit at about 185 yeah. 180 pounds 185 pounds and it's it's really really hard to go up a weight class 
you know, just naturally. Right. So like you just have to eat a lot, lift a lot and all that stuff. And then along the way, you know, you're going to be close. You know, it's hard to go from medium heavy to heavyweight. And then you're keep signing up for heavyweight tournaments, but you're like 10 pounds lighter than, you know, most people yeah. than just the regular weight. Because a lot of these guys are cutting from, you know, say 205. They're cutting from 215. They're cutting 10 pounds or whatever yeah. to get to that weight. And I'm over here just trying to climb, claw my way up there, right. you know? So it's, it takes a while. It takes but you a long had time. a choice to cut back to 170 or whatever, right? right? But right. you chose to go up. I, I, yeah, I would just say that um, I would just like, I would rather be just a bigger, stronger human than, you know, cutting weight for any jiu-jitsu tournaments. I, in my opinion, I feel like I sh in, for me, I should be, you know, uh, bigger, and, bigger stronger. and stronger that just works better for my game you know got you so yeah i thought that was like a interesting question because of the yeah i'm like i'm trying to cut you know <laughs> it's like a, i'm so like then i don't have to lift or whatever you know what i mean then go back down to the weight and i'll be the biggest man but like a mentality is different and then I mean, after this fight, and I would like to continue doing jiu-jitsu. And that. it's co cool thing is jiu-jitsu is like you can kind of do it rest of your life. Oh, much. yeah. Yeah. Every day, you yeah. know. What is uh, do you, Are you uh, trying to be a uh, professional or for the jiu-jitsu? Well, I would say I just want to keep doing bigger and better, bigger, better tournaments. You know, just I just want to win everything i guess you know, like <laughs> everything we did everything we sign up for i just want to win yeah you know that's that's pretty much it so I don't is really... there like a people who doesn't know that is there like a professional jujitsu well like i'd say the bigger better tournaments you're going to run into those people that are just you know that's all they do they're that's their profession right they don't go to work you know every day they don't have a full-time job they just train right so uh Go at so I'm, I'm like I would like to go to those you know bigger tournaments and you know like beat one those championship. Guys. Oh man, I was like I would like to try. I'm I'll definitely do ADCC trials yeah. for sure. You know I'm I'd be really excited to do that one. You know. Yeah, I see. Uh, like because uh, uh, I'm getting excited because of the I think like a Mikey guy, like a small guy. Oh yeah, old Musumeci, that yeah. little guy. Yeah, yeah he eats he's, like a pizza and pasta and all the time, whatever. And then he's like saying like. Yeah, he's like a first like uh, professional, and he's just like got a sponsors and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. I saw that Joe Rogan podcast with him, and him and Joe Rogan was talking about that jujitsu is probably going to be more mainstream over the years because right. of uh, popularity and such. Do you think that more and more people will be uh, professional in the jujitsu uh, community? A hundred percent. Like, cause I went to ADCC this this last ADCC in Vegas and there was like 12 or 13,000 people in the in the seats like in seats for 12 hours for 2 days you know and there was yeah there was a lot of people there and everyone with the crowd was you know cheering it was just like going to like a bit an MMA fight you know yeah so it's just only getting bigger and better yeah i think that it's there's a struggle, right, to be a viewer standpoint. Because, like, for example, like my girlfriend, for example, they she has no idea of jujitsu, right? So they're just like looking at people like hugging each other yeah. on the mat, right? Versus like MMA, you can see people punching, so they yeah. can kind of enjoy it, or whatever. So like, do you think what what would makes? Do you think just uh, everybody will? start taking jujitsu class and then a lot of popularity increase that's why do you think like a viewership is going to increase or i hope so i really do because i think um i'd say jujitsu is definitely more friendly for the hobbyist right mm -hmm. so like i mean pretty much anybody can you know anybody can do jujitsu but it's you know not very many people can just pick up you know mma or kickboxing or something like that Either right. it's just pain right yeah. so you know if you get if you see some exciting matches like some exciting like wrestling exchanges and you know and big submissions and stuff like that then i think that's going to get the eyes of all the people of and then you know hopefully get more people in the door yeah i mean for sure i mean but to starting out like people who like never done jujitsu right like 
they should just go to class? Yeah, a hundred percent. Cause, and then you got to just understand that like jujitsu isn't just like a fight or, a, or a brawl or an exercise. It's literally problem solving. Cause that's all this, that's all this is. It's just like complex problem solving, you know? And I feel like you get, people get like the wrong perception. They think the the guy, like the knuckle dragger guy, the big, strong, you know, gorilla looking dude's going to be the dude that's going to beat everybody, but it's actually not true. It's actually like the, the more cerebral guy, the guy that can think through cerebral, is cerebral the guy that can think through all these problems and they can yeah. come up with all the ants with the answers, you know, faster. Yeah. It's, it's always those guys that are really the guys that, you know, progress further into the sport. You know? That makes sense because sometimes whenever I roll, and then I'm just like, stop, I'm like, hmm, what should I do? And then when I'm thinking about it, I get like smashed or whatever. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, a, it's, it's literally just a big problem, you know, and then yeah. the better you get, the more answers you get. So I try to have an answer for every position or every situation that I get put in. That's the goal. Yeah. And I continue to just keep learning more and more and more. You know. And it's like a like people say like a puzzle or whatever. It's like a chess match. I kind of like to play chess too, but like if you get better at chess, like you can kind of see seven moves ahead. Oh, and that's it's a hundred percent true. Yeah, because when I roll with people, you know, I can see patterns and I recognize those patterns. And I've been in that same exact position so many times that I know exactly what that person is going to do, you know, but then sometimes they get a hold of a white belt to just do some crazy <laughs> spazzy movement, you know, pop my ankle or something stupid, you know, right. but, but yeah, cause once you've been in those positions so many times, you'll start to see the patterns and I know exactly what you're going to do. I'm like, and then I'll set moves up off of what I know you're fixing to do. So it's just a, I, I'll like set traps for people, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's not a knuckle dragger sport at all. Even though we, you know, make jokes about it and yeah. stuff. But it's it's for, it's definitely for the more you know, thoughtful person. Yeah, for sure. I mean, so we talked about a lot of stuff about like to get better at jujitsu, right? And then like, you know, watching the videos, go to practice, roll as hard or whatever, and then not do too much cardio. That's a that's a controversial thing. Cause I know Austin gets up and at he the crack so of dawn much. runs and everything. <laughs> and I, uh, bro, I haven't ran in a while. <laughs> but uh, what would you say if you if you have to pick a one thing, right? To say like one sentence to get better at jujitsu, what would you say? Do the mental work, a hundred percent. Do the mental work, cause like. You could go, I've seen this so many times. Um, I'll go, I'll see people at different gyms or I'll roll with, pe you know, some people. And over the, like the course of a couple months, they won't have made any progress really because they're not thinking about what they're doing. They're not analyzing their matches, their roles. They're not doing those things and they're not learning new movements, right? They're just doing the same move over and over and over. You, you've rolled with people like that, like, oh, this guy's going to, you know, do Dude, this takedown yeah. or he's going to pull guard into this guard. And he's going to do this one sweep and he's going to do this pass. And, you know, you have to learn new moves and you have to apply those moves. So you have to go do the mental work, you know. So mental work definition will be learning new things. Study. You need to study. You need to study yourself. You need to study your your roles. And then you need to go find new things, you know, to implement into your game. And the best way I've, d I've felt to do this is um, I'll roll and uh, rolling with Austin is a prime, this is a prime example. Whenever I first started at the forge, Austin Morris, he would guillotine me, especially from every position. You know, I could be in a guard and he would just dive for a guillotine. We could be wrestling. He would club my head and do a guillotine. And he would finish those guillotines every time. So then I knew I had a problem, right? I'm like, okay, this is not working. I'm getting guillotined too much. So I went online, you know, and I found the answers that I needed to find. You know, I watched a couple of instructionals. I watched some videos, watched a technique on how to get, to stop the guillotine, how to prevent it, how to, you know, different kinds of escapes from early escapes all the way down to late escapes to the very bitter end, you know? And once I learned those things, then I stopped getting guillotine so much, right? So 
instead of just trying to find, you know, some random thing to learn, look at your, look at your roles, find a common thing. Okay. Austin for one keeps guillotining me, find the answer. And then you'll be, you know, excited to learn those things. And those, and a lot of times it'll just stick. you like the information will just stick, you know, easily that instead of learning something that's just random that it has no, you know, yeah. fit in your game. Got you. That totally makes sense. I mean, I know, I don't know, like, probably he does it too, but for Austin, for example, when I roll with him, he always do the move he teaches that class, like to just show me or whatever. It's, I think it's crazy to me because every time we roll, because I think he has every opportunity, whatever he can do to me. So, but he just like do that, like today that, that like a repel move yep. to like choke stuff. Yep. And I knew he's going to do that. Cause like he taught that move. So and then like I was rolling and he just did it. I'm like, damn it. Yep. But I think that's like how the way I guess he gets better. And then to try the new move. I think this is very interesting to me because what you're saying is you don't do too much cardio, but you talk about, because a lot of people talks about repetition is the most important thing, mm -hmm. right? But you're thinking like learning a new skills, all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of like a, outside of box thinking but you're very very um successful of what you're doing and jujitsu i mean like everybody can say that so i think very very interesting way to look at a jujitsu and mm -hmm. every move um so i do ask a lot of uh every guest coming here what is advice to yourself five years ago but 2018 would be five years ago mm -hmm. so that's before you started jujitsu, right? Yes. What advice would you give yourself five years ago? Man, see, I would probably, because five years ago, I was on the right path career-wise, you know? I was going to school, doing all the right things, you know? And I never really had those, had a problem with that. But I would say, man, you need to get like, get in the gym and start training some jujitsu, <laughs> baby. Because all I, I had no... You know, there was there. I had nothing other than going to work, and then I mean, being with my wife, my girlfriend then, you know, and I guess getting wasted sometimes, you know, going to bars and stuff. That's all I had to do, you know. There's, it's not that's not very fulfilling, you know. Yeah. But you know, grinding every day, you know, working every day towards this like the goal to get better, and then lifting weights to complement that, and you know. I, I would say, you know, get in that, get in the gym, man. Nice. Absolutely. So how do you, so you, so I get to, um, I got to ask this question sometimes like, cause you train multiple times a week and then uh, multiple times a day. Also you work full time job and then, you know, sometimes people are like, do you guys, do you have a life or whatever? Right. Like I'm, I get asked, like I'm doing YouTube stuff, working out multiple times a day. And then like, you know, how do you balance your life? And then also like your relationship, you have a uh, wife. How do you do that? Uh, she kills me every time. She's like, God, you, you know, you're always, you know, working and training and then you're out super late. Cause like no, a normal weekday, you know, I barely see her, you know, like yeah. I'll be working and she goes and work and then she goes and trains jujitsu and she has violin practice and then she lifts weights. And by the time I get home, she's in bed. You know, I get home at like after lifting weights, after we get done training jujitsu at like 10 or 1030, then I still got to make dinner. I still got to take a shower. I still got to hang out, you know, and she's like just passed out. You know? <laughs> so we just hang out on, you know, we hang out when we try to get as much free time as yeah. we can, you know, and then hang out watching TV or something where I'm always a proponent of going out and like eating food and watching movies and stuff. Yeah. You know, what's your diet look like? Oh, man. So. I think getting a, I used to not care what I ate because yeah. I would just naturally just be 180, 185 pounds, but tr getting, going from medium heavy to heavyweight, I have to really be on top of, of making sure I eat enough food. Oh, my alarm's going up. There we go. Is that but, like a training alarm? I don't know. It's, a, <laughs> yeah, it's a, one of the alarms, but um, I just had to make sure that I'm eating enough because it's just so easy to just 
not pay attention. And then Do you follow like a high protein diet. hundred oh, percent. Yeah. hundred percent. So when I started trying, I made the decision, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go up to medium or from to heavyweight. Yeah. So then I got on my macro counter and everything. And I really looked at how much, you know, what I need to be eating, mm -hmm. you know, and then I looked pretty much, I need to be eating around 3000, 3,500 calories. Damn. All right. But just hit like at least a, gra a gram of protein per body weight. And then you know, some good fats in there and then the rest is carbs. And you, and I tried like not eating any carbs and stuff like that. And then it would just make me feel foggy and I feel like crap, you know, so make sure I'm eating, eating good carbs, make sure I'm eating uh, plenty of protein. All right. Yeah. And then I figured out, I figured that out. And then I don't really have to track what I eat now. I just know what to eat, what I need to be doing. You know. So what kind of protein do you like the best? Oh man, it's like, well, you can't go wrong with any with steaks and stuff. But steaks are kind of pricey, so <laughs> I, you know, I end up eating a lot of chicken and a lot of fish, like a lot of tilapia and stuff. Tilapia. Yeah. You like salmon? Yes, I love salmon. I would like I I love cooking that like uh, good salmon in like the air fryer and stuff. And yeah. Then, uh, do you do you go through like a only like eat organic food and stuff or it's just any oh, just anything just yeah. whatever i can get like i'll but then i'll get burned out on a meat so i've been eating like pork chops and stuff instead of chicken because i can't even look at chicken right now you know, <laughs> it's gonna take it's gonna take me a couple of weeks to get yeah. back on that do you take any supplements yeah 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 like uh take some uh just creatine stuff uh and then of course like bcas and stuff amino energy okay, to so get going do you take bcas yes yes okay so why do you take bcas well because I guess they're good for me, man. Good for your joints and whatever, right? So Zevin, uh, you know Zevin, right? Oh, yes, and Zevin uh, talks shit about BCAAs <laughs> because his say he say uh, creatine is important, right? Because of uh, recovery, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, also uh, shout to shout shout out to BJJ Supplements. Hey. Co use code code Ninja. Editor put that quote in <laughs> right here, right there. but uh, link in the below. But anyways, BCAA, Zevin was saying that Ze Zevin and my uh, uh, Muay Thai coach JD was like had an argument oh. over this. But BCAA is helps only uh, uh, protein deficiency. So like uh, if you drink, uh, if you don't eat protein less than 70 grams or less, then BCAA will cover those pr protein deficiency. Oh. So if you eat more than 70 grams of uh, protein, you might as well drink a Kool-Aid. Uh, that's what Devin says. Oh, what? But I don't know that's true. But man, you know. I, I don't know. I'm not a scientist, man. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is, yeah, all I know is I just get, I just try to like help take those supplements, try to help me out, try to recover as much as possible. Uh, yeah. So if it like gives me a little chance of like yeah. not being so messed up at the end of the week, then. Yeah. But you know. also like you don't, re seems like you don't really sleep that much neither. Oh, right? Well, I do now. I, I do now, now that I've got like a regular job that's, you know, from eight to four, but I used to work at Vance, right? So I'd have to, this is where it gets kind of nutty because I used to work from, on Mondays would be 3 a.m. to noon. Mm. And so I have an hour and a half drive. So I would get up at one, you know, and I'd, I'd just drive all, you know, drive. And then I'd work for my eight hours or nine hours. And then I'd have an hour and a half drive back. I try to get a little bit of sleep, like another nap. And then I train and lift weights and all that stuff and then do it all over again. And then we're not done training and lifting weights till like what, 10, 10 o'clock. So then I have to be up at one in the morning again. Damn. So I would only have three hours there and then I get like another two or three hour nap. So I was for like a couple of years, I was just living three hours here and three hours here. So Damn. now I get a, now I'm lucky enough. I get like six or seven straight hours, Yeah, which is way better. You know, that's but, awesome. I mean, it's such a dedication. You know? Oh no. Yeah. I would just show up to class sometimes just, just, caffeinated like you know, <laughs> caffeine crazy you know, crazy dude those are bcas oh yeah i'll be, be mixing like bcas and amino energy and yeah. pre-workout i'm like on my three hours of sleep and go but get you do up. take a caffeine oh yeah man yeah yeah i'm a I drink an energy drink a day probably which is probably not good for me but a day, once a day yeah once a day and then i used to drink a lot of coffee so too so yeah. That's not too bad. I, I'm pretty bad, but <laughs> I got a super crazy caffeine tolerance. Yeah. I mean, that's right. I mean, so what, um, how do you see yourself in five years? 
five years. Oh man, hopefully still doing this. I just try to keep the inner, in, uh, the injuries, like injuries down because, uh, like I've tried, I'm doing a lot better at stretching before and after practice and, you know, um, try, you know, really try to take care of myself in that way because you, you know, like I got, I think I pulled like a, my psoas muscle and it was just killing my lower back. And I didn't know that until the point where it got just so bad where I was just, you know, hobbling around, you know, but I'd say recovering and then just like stretching before and after practice and just being more conscious of, you know, my body. Cause yeah. if I had it my way, I would just never stretch and I would just roll super hard and lift a bunch of weights and, you know, drink a beer and eat some meat and call it a day. But no, I gotta be, I gotta be, you know, take care of myself a little better yeah. now. I mean, I think that you, you'll be like, hopefully I can see you like on big TV and all that. That'd stuff. be the goal, man. Yeah. Just yeah. gotta keep doing those. Just keep working hard, you know? Yeah. So like how, how can uh, people find you and support you? And then like, you know, like, Jiu-Jitsu and then you go into pan tournaments and stuff and the airplane stuff, you know, like uh, tickets and all that kind of stuff and training and supplements and all that kind of stuff, right? Like uh, how can people support you and then also how can people can find you? Well, uh, my Instagram is Jake the Snake, you know, so Jake the Snake BJJ, I think it is, yeah. And, but I have a full-time job, right? So I'm like fortunate enough, I can really afford, I can afford to do these things. Um, uh, but it is, like you said, it, it's, it's expensive, you know, like all the flights. Cause we did, um, worlds in California, you know, so the flights and then being there for a week, the Airbnb, all those things, it adds up. So, you know, um, we've tried to, we've raised money before, like we did, um, we're doing like seminars and stuff and having little fundraisers, like selling like little, little things here and there trying to like, you know, raise some money. Um, but that's how you pretty much find me there. Like if we need some, like a little extra money, we're doing a, um, um, a gi pans, uh, uh training camp. Right. So mm -hmm. like at the forge, we're going to go, it'll be every Thursdays and Saturdays. So I believe it was like, um, you can talk to Austin Morris, but you know, I think if you pay like a hundred, hundred and ten dollars, you can come in for the entire camp twice a week, do these grueling comp training. So that way, you know, those hard practices really make the, the tournament just so much easier. All right. So got you, know. you makes sense. I mean, I, that's something that, um, I would like to do in the future, like, uh, doing this, uh, podcast and YouTube and stuff. And then, uh, I wanted to, you know, showcase people that possibility and then also like uh, inspire some people to do whatever, right? Like jiu-jitsu or combat sports or fitness. I truly believe in fitness is important in life. And then the, I changed my Instagram name to the Jack Ninja. Yeah. The reason is I wanted to create a um, uh, uh, gi and the rush guard brands and then like uh, stuff and the Jack, Jack Ninja. Um, whenever I have a thousand subscribers on YouTube and I start selling it and then I would like to, I talked to the, another guy who um, have a podcast next week that uh, he is having a nonprofit organization to support a child to afford a sports. Oh, and then cool. also like a people who, like you have a full-time job and all that kind of stuff, some, some people, wanted to do these kind of training but like young or whatever they don't have uh, resources right. to go train i would like to do those kind of proceed like some sort of uh percentage of that sales to help out i think that's all it's about to like help other people to get that stuff so i hope uh, someday i can <laughs> do that to uh, people you know that hopefully you can wear my gear yeah and, uh, win some world <laughs> win some worlds take a picture with it on that podium baby <laughs> that's awesome well thank you for coming in and uh, today and then you know i'm i'm grateful for you teach me a lot of stuff and then you're teaching a lot of people in the forge and then like i yeah i see you and then like i you know austin and then like uh, inspire me to like be better and then like it's it's nice to be like uh you know shittiest person in the gym so like i'm like oh i can get better like this is the kind of like yeah you know. <laughs> yeah man like uh, you know sometimes i'm like hey 
you know, I know that, that role was pretty rough, but yeah. just don't think of it as, oh, you just got smashed. Like, just think, you know, you keep at it. You're going to be that guy. You yeah. know, you're going to be the the hammer more than the nail. You yeah, know? I can't I can't wait to like, you know, like uh, maybe like a couple of years down the line and then like maybe I'll submit you someday. That's <laughs> that's my goal. <laughs> I've got a lot of payback coming and I understand that. You know, I have so many paybacks coming. Yeah, but hopefully, you know, I have to train hard every day and then, then uh, hopefully I get that. But uh, well, thank you guys, everybody, to watching this. And if you guys are watching YouTube, please like and subscribe and comment. And then uh, every Friday at noon, we uh, release a new episode. And if you guys are watching or uh, listening to the podcast in every platform, then download it and then give me a five star review. And then always be frank and drink a ton of water and get jacked. All right, peace. No problem. <laughs>